Hey everyone, Danny Webster here for and this is the software review of the Motorola Droid X2 on Verizon, and this device has a dual core processor, and we are also running Android 2.2 along with a newer build of Moto Blur, so uh, let's get to it. So many users in the past have really disliked the Moto Blur user interface, but this newer version is much easier to use and it's uh, similar to an Android vanilla build opposed to other builds in the past on less advanced phones. So let's go to some of the widgets here. We'll just uh, start here and we'll choose some of the Motorola widgets that come on the device. So here we have some uh, buttons in which we can change some radios on and off. We have contacts, date and time, GPS toggle, of course it's another radio button, our messages, news, and some of these other uh, information such as weather and stuff like that. And let's see what else. We also have sticky notes and we have another cool one in the Android widgets. Let's go back to the Android widgets and we can actually uh, update news and weather directly from here and we can even have some of our bookmarks. Where were those at? Let me check here again. I think they're in the, uh, here we are, bookmark widget, which is pretty cool because you can add your own bookmarked widgets directly from the home screen. So if you go to a website that you want to view a lot, all you do is click on one of these widgets and it will launch that website. So it's a pretty neat feature to have directly on the home screen. So now we can just go uh, to some of the live wallpapers and there's nothing too original for the Droid X2. The only thing we have is the, the uh, generic Android live wallpapers that come on pretty much every other Android phone out there that comes with 2.1 or higher. So let's just get out of here and we can view some of the other wallpapers. Let's see here. These are other ones that come with the Droid X2 and there's uh, just a few other graphics, some synonymous with the uh, Droid uh, product line because uh, the Droid product line is somewhat kind of a uh, dark and of course you all know that Lucas Films and uh, George Lucas is behind the uh, Droid name for Verizon. So we can just get out of here. Let's go to some of the applications. So we'll go down here and we have an alarm and timer. This is a little bit different than what comes on a stock Android device. Uh, pretty similar, but a little bit different. We have our alarm here, so we can set alarms. We can also go down to the menu button and we can hide the clock if we'd like. We can also change some of the settings. We can also go to timer and uh, change the timer if we'd like for cooking or whatnot. So we'll just get out of here. And we have Amazon Kindle, which allows you to read Amazon books directly from this uh, Droid X2. So if I go in here, I don't have anything synced up right now, but we'll just see how it works. Of course, it wants us to input our information. So uh, that's something you will have to try out if you decide to get this device. We have our browser, which does have Flash 10.3 right now. We have a reskin calculator, which is pretty similar to the stock Android. And if I turn it sideways, it does give me a Oh, I thought it would give me a scientific, oh, let's see here, advanced panel, so uh, not too advanced, but uh, pretty nice, I guess, if you're going to do some quick calculations. We have our calendar, which we'll sync up with Google calendars, and here we can view some of our, our events, and we can also add other things uh, to the calendar directly from here, and it will sync up with Google if you uh, assign it to. Let's see, we have our camcorder, which is a pretty nice camera. This uh, device is capable of recording up to 720p HD resolution, and it also will geotag your uh, photos and your videos directly from the camera application. So here we're on the video camera, and if I'd like, I can just switch it to the camera right here, and we can view some of the effects that come with this uh, Droid X2. So here, we probably can't see too many great things, just uh, aiming at the bottom of this table here. So a few other effects. We can just go back. We can also zoom in and zoom out. And to take a photo, unlike the Droid X, which had a dedicated camera button at the top, we have this on-screen camera shutter button right here. So let's just go back to the applications. We have our contacts. So we can view all of our contacts. One nice thing about this is if we go to the dialer, we can start dialing a phone number and it'll start, it'll bring up the phone number because it has smart dial, so it's a nice feature to have. I'm surprised that other Android devices don't have this, uh, which uh, is a very nice feature to have, especially if you're gonna make a phone call and then you call a lot instead of having to search through all your contacts. So let's see what else we have. We have uh, DLNA, which is a nice, great thing to have if you like to watch videos or upload media directly from your device or download things to your device from your uh, network drive. So uh, here we can play media if I'd like. Let's see if it will work. 
So I need to connect one of my uh, media servers. Let's see here, I'll just choose this, and we'll go to video, all video. Let's see if there's nothing on the device right now, but uh, you get the gist. You can also connect this to an Xbox 360 and play media directly from the X or on the Xbox from the Droid X2. We have our email with many different uh, clients in which you can set up. So we'll just wait for this to load. So we have all these clients in which you can set up, and uh, you can also specify which ones you want if you have all of the uh, settings for the server to the email client. So we have emergency alerts, which doesn't really have anything on there right now. We can view our files directly from the device. So we can view the internal phone storage. We can also do SD cards. So let's go here and see if there's anything. I have no photos on here right now, but you can see how it's easy to search through your files. And if you've noticed, the screen transitions on the Droid X2 are very quick, and we'll do some benchmark tests at the end of this uh, little review here. We have FM player. Of course, we will need a headset plugged in in order to use the FM antenna. And let's see, it doesn't come with this headset, which is a little disappointing, but it is nice that you are still able to have the FM radio. So let's see here. We can uh, change it to, oh, let me go back. Where was I at? Okay. Go here. We can also change it to the speaker, so you can listen to it right there from the uh, from the speakers in the back of the phone. So we'll just get out of here. We have our gallery, which I don't have any photos on here right now, but it's a little bit different than the actual stock Android gallery. We have our camera roll. We have our My Library our off online, so we can uh, upload or download photos from various online sources, such as uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatnot. We have our friends photos and we can also access our DLNA servers directly from the gallery application. We have our Gmail, which we've probably all seen before. We have Google search, which is a pretty basic and we can search for web pages or whatnot and uh, find things directly from there. We have our help center, which does give nice guided tutorials on how to set up the Droid X2 and also uh, answer some common questions if you have uh, some questions about this device. We go to instant messaging, and there are three instant messaging clients to choose from. We have AIM, Windows Live Messenger, and Yahoo. Unfortunately, we don't have Facebook IM or some of those other ones. We have Google Latitude, which is just other layers on the Google Maps. So let's just wait for this to load. So here we have Google Latitude, and we can connect with our friends and view our friends uh, directly from our Google Maps application. So let's get out of here for just a second. We have Let's Golf 2, which is just a demo game, and I've showed this before on other devices. We have Google Maps, which we just saw, but we can view it again. We can change the layers. Oh, so we we'll go up here and we'll choose a satellite layer. And Google Maps is really nice now, especially on Android devices, because you're able to get the 3D city views, and we can also get the uh, street views and all those other great things that are associated with Google Maps. We have the Android Market which is similar to other Android market uh, div markets on other Android devices, except we have the Verizon Vcast app. So from here, we can view all the uh, dedicated Verizon apps, and we'll just go back and see what else we have. We have My Verizon Mobile, which will give you some account information. We have Google Navigation, which is a very nice application. It's probably what makes Android one of the best platforms to have, is just the way that everything is integrated. All you have to do is search for something, uh, call them to make a reservation. Let's see, we're calling a restaurant. You just make a reservation, get the address, type navigation, and go directly to there. And it's a really quick and th that's probably the best thing about Android is the way that everything is integrated into each other. We have our news, which is a uh, modal blur application here. We can view some of our news. We can subscribe to other things if we like. We'll just go back. News and weather, which is an Android app. And wait for that to load. So here we can view our weather and our top stories and uh, some other interesting news out in the world right now. So let's see, we have NFL Mobile. Unfortunately, the NFL isn't going on right now, but when they start their new season, this would be a great application to have if you are a football fan. So we can view some news and video scores. Let's go, oh, apparently I'm too fast for this device, so let's see. Uh, we'll just go back, let's see here. What else do we have? We have uh, little videos and whatnot, and it looks like it's gonna try to play a video right now. So uh, the video quality is really great on this device. It's a pretty fast, right now I'm connected to a Wi-Fi connection. We'll just get out of here and go back to some other applications. Uh, Need for Speed Shift, which is another demo game, and I'm not really gonna go into that right now. We have Google Places, which is a nice app if you want to find something in your area. And it's a great if you just want to explore nearby. Let's say you are in an unknown area and you want to find something to do. Well, all you have to do is explore nearby 
and find something to do. It's a pretty great application to have on any Android device. Quick Office, which allows you to view, uh, view documents directly from the Droid X2. And we can also update and explore the, uh, let's see here, do we have anything on the SD card? Let's try. Uh, probably nothing, so uh, we'll just get out of here. And Quick Office is a, a nice application if you just want to view some uh, documents. We have our settings, which we'll go into in just a few seconds. Skype Mobile, and as you probably know, Verizon has teamed up with Skype to uh, have an integrated system on their Android devices. And this uh, Skype application is a great thing to have if you're in another country and you need to make a phone call or something like that. Or if you just want to make some phone calls and you don't want to use your minutes, you can use a, the Wi-Fi on your device. So we'll just get out of there. We have Google Talk which allows us to uh, connect to our Gmail or Google contacts directly from this application. Unfortunately, we can't make phone calls with this particular version. We have a task manager, which is nice to have on any device, especially one that uh, is so power hungry like the Droid X2 here, so we can uh, end applications. We can also set things to auto end. If we have an application, we can set it to end after two minutes. We'll just get out of there. We have our tasks, so these are a list of, uh, I guess, events that you would do or something like that, uh, tasks that you would have and you can set them by priority and you can also uh, update them directly from this application. So we can also have text messaging which is just a similar text message. So here we have one that I signed up for NF NFL mobile alerts so we'll just get out of there. Voice commands which is uh, built into this particular device. It's different than the Please voice search. Command. Call work. So that's how that application works. We'll just click no and we'll just get out of here. We also have voice search, like I said before, and this is a nice, great application and another great thing that makes Android so awesome. So we'll just click here, pocketnow.com. And it looks as though it found exactly what I was looking for. So we'll launch the browser and it's a nice, great feature to have on any Android device. So we'll just go back home and to the last few applications we have here, we have visual voicemail which I don't think is set up right now. I don't know if it will work over a Wi-Fi connection either, so we'll see if this works. So I have no voicemails, and I can call my voicemail, and I can also subscribe to Visual Voicemail. Let's go back, and we have YouTube, which is our final application that's uh, brought on this particular device, and all these applications, unfortunately, aren't able to be removed unless you root your device, which uh, is pretty easy to do, and I will post a link on the pocketnow.com website is how to root this Droid X2. So let's go to some speed tests and we'll be right back. Okay, so we'll run the Quadrant Standard Benchmark and we'll be right back after this is finished. Okay, so our benchmark results, I should mention that I did end all of the applications that were running. I got 2,545, which is a pretty fast device. And here you can see the Nexus 1 with uh, Android 2.2, it's almost double the speed as the Nexus 1. So let's do another one. I will do Smart Bench 2011. So we'll launch that application. Okay, so our device on Smart Bench 2011 got 2,344 on, on Productivity Index. In our Game Index, we got 2,508, so a pretty quick device. Uh, let's see what's comparable to that. All these other ones have 1.5 gigahertz, so it looks as though the other one with a 1 gigahertz a processor, let's see, the first one is right about here. It got 3,000 and around the same for the uh, game score. So we'll do Linpack finally. So on Linpack, we got 36.996 M flops in 2.27 seconds, so that's very fast. Of course, this device does have the dual core Tegra 2 processor running at 1 gigahertz processing speed, so it is a pretty quick device. So let's go into some of the settings here. So we can change many settings, and let me go down to about information. And oh, I didn't want to go there, let me just go back. Okay, so we're in running Android 2.2.2, which is the uh, latest Froyo build. Unfortunately, this device doesn't have gingerbread, but hopefully it does uh, get updated in the near future. We can also go back. We can change some other settings uh, in here. We can view the HDMI location and all the other great features that Android 2.2 has to offer. So this has been the software review of the Motorola Droid X2. And if you like our videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up and also leave us comments down below.
In case you missed it, you can check out the unboxing link right about here, and you can check out the hardware tour right about here, and stay tuned for the final review coming up next. Thanks for watching.